What a perfect morning to be out here in the garden getting things done. It is in the 60s and it feels like fall. And as you can see behind me, the goldenrod is blooming and fall is arriving in Georgia. So we're going to hurry up and get some of our fall starts in the ground and a few more seeds. And let's see what we have for our winter garden. Cutie. Now, uh goes in the basket. You be careful with those. They're I'm spicy. A, I'm a the green one that's No, the green one is a bell pepper. You're right. What well, you like picking peppers? Yeah, I like picking peppers. It's gonna get cold this weekend, so Odin said we needed to pick some of these peppers in case they get too cold. We got a lot of peppers to pick. Lots and lots and lots. Not the bound Some very I got spicy ones, ones back there. there. And then over here in the carrot bed, we used our old seed. And this row came up well. And this row came up well. But only the radish came up in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these radish. They're all ready. Ready. It only takes 30 days for the breakfast radish. So I'm going to pull and whatever we can't use or don't want to use, I'll just give to the animals. But most of these have a little root on them, but some of them won't at all. So the animals will get lucky. All right, Odin. Give me my carrot seed. Yeah. Can you hand that back to me? Thank you. We've got all these rows prepped again. And... You're going to plant them? Okay. I'm going to go and plant them. You're going to pick one out? One, yeah. This carrot. Ooh, yeah. That's a nice looking one. The wood. Yeah. Can I open up this place? Yeah, I can open it for you. All right. What do you got there, Ryan? I have some Swiss chard. I'm going to plant in one of our beds right here. We had done our older seed of Swiss chard and rutabaga, and a few Swiss chard came up, but we got some from our friend Ashley, and we're going to plant those. And then he just finished seeding this beet bed. You see the beets took right there, but nowhere else. So we're using some of our newer seed for that. Using up old seed is a good idea, but it can be kind of complicated because and then you end up with a little bit of a delay in your planting. But we still have plenty of time here in Georgia. We'll be okay. Can you pick up all of those fallen ground cherries so they don't reseed? Yeah, I'm going to put them in the Oh, you're putting them in the holes? <laughs> all right, guys. So when I say, where did all these ground cherries come from next year? This is your evidence that I'm crazy for not raking those up and getting them out. But that's part of what makes this a permaculture garden because we let some of our stuff reseed. This basil is all from last year's reseeding. All of our ground cherries are from last year reseeding. Sure, I should thin it a little better in the spring. And I probably will next year after experiencing this robust ground cherry and basil garden this year. That's not the only thing that's grown robust in this garden. I am finally seeing some blooms. I was a little worried I planted them too late. As long as they can grow into a full-size bud by our first frost, they'll be fine. And we have another 30 days. So we, we did it. We, we got the window. They will get about as big as my upper digit of my thumb or fatter than that, but about that size. So you can see they have a long ways to go still. Y'all, I just love this volunteer winged sumac and goldenrod right at the back of the garden. I want this area at the back of the garden to become more of a forest of food and more wild and native in nature. So these are perfect for that. We're going to plant some more berries back here. 
We've got blackberries all along that black back edge. I'm gonna do some raspberries and strawberries and whatever else to kind of drown out that Bermuda that took over. Perfect place for a kitty to nap. My sweet aura. Y'all, I was just about to start pulling watermelon out of the bed that it's growing in and look at the size of this one all the way over here. It climbed over the winter squash. It came all the way from that bed over there by those white bags. That's where the roots are. Very, very prolific watermelon year. We've been eating watermelon nonstop. We got a beautiful ripe watermelon in October. Some of you saw in a short video we made. And then look at this Chumboncino. Look at that, it's huge. It's huge, guys, it's huge. Got another big, big one over here. Beautiful. I've already picked a candy roaster. Got some kind of melon or squash growing right there. And I'm gonna have to pick these watermelon in order to make a new spot to grow other things. Speaking of permaculture gardening, our Egyptian walking onions are multiplying at the base. We have multiple bulbs growing so we can split them and divide them. But this right here, this tiny guy, this is a bulbul that dropped. And you can see there's one there, there's one over there. There's little bulbuls that have dropped. A lot of them dropped right here near the plant. You see, like that one right there. So this is a great permaculture plant. It's time to divide them, which I don't know if I'm gonna get to today. And then we have a native wildflower growing right near the garden edge that is providing nectar for our honeybees and all of our beautiful native bees. This is so hard for me to do, <laughs> cutting a plant that's still growing watermelon, just because we've got to. We needed this path cleared. The watermelon had grown all the way into the fence. So Odin's collecting the watermelon in hoops that some of them will be red and juicy. And if they're not, the goats will love them. You're the best watermelon picker. Wait a minute, I gotta see if this watermelon's done. Knock, knock, knock. Does it sound hollow? Knock, knock, knock. I think this one's ready to be picked. He's super sweet. I Odin. You're Odin? I thought you were a watermelon. You were growing in the watermelon patch. I remember seeing this one. Y'all, I honestly thought that these tiny watermelons were not going to be anywhere close to ripe. But they're sitting over here, and this one just split open. And it's delicious. That one's splitting too. Cray cray. I guess they'll be yummy. You going to rip that one open? Yeah. Not yet. Watermelon. Watermelon everywhere. Got piles everywhere. <laughs> I can't. Need help? Yeah, I need help. Looks like it's pretty white inside, actually. Maybe it was inside. It not was inside. Super juicy, though. I wonder how it tastes. Let me try it. It kind of tastes like a cucumber. Not bad. It'd be good like a salad. Okay. It'd be good like a salad, I think. Wow, Ryan, that looks great. I love the grid pattern. What'd you do there? So I've got two different types of Swiss chard and I planted, like you said, the grid pattern. I put garlic, seed garlic in between the Swiss chard. Very nice. We got our garlic seed from Mary's Heirloom Seed. Really excited. Which one is... So we got uh, Enchilium red seed garlic for the majority of this bed. And then we have Music seed garlic for this small end over here. Awesome. I think it's going to grow really well together. Me too. Mom, I see you. Huh? What are you doing? Show me. What'd you do to that watermelon? Let me see it. <laughs> Show me. 
Show me. <laughs> He's just drinking the watermelon. All right, so this is where the watermelon were planted. We got all the plants up. And we're gonna do this bed and this bed with more fall plant starts. All right, so I've got all my holes poked into this bed that we just made. And we're again doing the grid pattern, uh, having alternating rows of garlic. And then this time, I'm planting Brussels sprouts. So these are Dagon Brussels sprouts and they're gonna go in between the garlic and hopefully I get to it before the cat buries my holes because this is a plug and play garden where I could just pop them right in. All right. So guys, I planted and I have been fun. You're planting and you're having fun? Yeah. What are you planting? Can you tell us what that is? Um, bro broccoli. Broccoli? Yeah. He's planting and he's having fun. He wanted to tell the video. He's doing a good job. He really does. Look at that. That's some high quality planting right there. He does a very good job. Look at that. He puts it in the hole. He presses it down. He covers up the roots with the soil. He does it perfect. Good job, buddy. Ta-da. You want more? Watch out. Me too. You... That's sweet. I think that's a spicy one. I think I think that's it came from the spicy bed. Yeah, we we're picking peppers. We've got a lot of peppers to pick. I don't think we're gonna try to focus on that. Instead, we're gonna focus on getting more beds prepped so that we can plant. So we got the dragon tongue beans seed harvested and the ground cherries as cleaned up as we can, but they're just gonna have to be a million volunteers next year. And then all the kale and collards that were in that bed are going to go to the animals because they are full of insect. There's just caterpillars and aphids and and we could pick some off and we did actually save some but um, for dinner tonight. We have a whole bunch more kale that needs to be planted so it's fine. It's, it's perfect. And giving it to the animals makes sure that it's no waste. What are you harvesting now? Um, some basil. Some basil. Good job. Daddy's adding some fresh compost to the beds. And then we'll get busy planting some broccolini and kale. Or are we doing cauliflower? I know we want to do broccolini in one bed. Yes. And then kale or cauliflower in the other. Maybe plant a little bit of each tray in each bed because we're running out of space. Yeah. We need more garden beds built. We do. Can we get a bucket for our tractor so we can move the mulch piles faster? Because I would have already had a bunch of beds over there where the mulch piles are. We need a bucket on a tractor for sure. But that's the bucket costs as much as the tractor. I sure wish it was that easy. Just to have a bucket on our tractor and move all that mulch but unfortunately we're doing it by hand wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow so that pile right there is where I would have a whole nother system of beds I'd probably plant the rest of our plants no problem but it requires way more physical labor than I'm capable of doing and I've got Ryan doing a lot of physical labor just to get these two beds done. So I don't know that there'll be much physical labor time left in the day to get any of that prepared. But we're getting so much more done over here that I'm very satisfied with what we've been able to plant already. Uh, what was that, Liam? I would like to get planting. You would like to get planting? What do you think we've been doing out here this whole time? 
Do you know how to break up a head of garlic? Pulling the layers out and getting each clove off. Can you pull off a clove? Yeah. Show me. I just was doing it. All right, let me see you rip a clove off. Do you know what I mean when I say clove? Um, I think so. I hope so, because we use a lot of garlic in our house. And you've planted with me before. There you go. Remember which side goes up? Oh. Do you remember which side gets planted pointing up? Pointy. Pointy side up. And if you look real close, you can see that where you can tell that there's going to be roots growing. Pointy side up where the leaf will grow from. Okay. Okay. Just do every other hole and then opposite in the next row. And that makes it a nice grid pattern with our broccolini. I am tired, Mama. I'm tired too. You boys have been a great help. Okay, you did a good, you did good. You did great. So they've got all the kale planted and the broccolini. We've got the garlic added to this one. Now we're gonna add garlic to this one. Whoo! Good workers. Ryan, I didn't want you to hurt yourself today too bad. Looks like you got a helper though. Yeah, it's super lightweight right now, so it's actually a great time to do this. Good. I hope it doesn't hurt your back, because I know it would mine. And my syncope. Oof. There are some hard workers out here. Look at this. It's looking like a garden again instead of a jungle. Still got quite a bit of jungle, but plenty of new beds going in. We'll have another bed or two if we get rid of the whole pile. Yay, my hero. And another watermelon break. How is this one? Is it a sweet one? Yeah. Even this little thing right here, smaller in my hand, was ripe. I am so surprised. We got a few more to last us for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Watermelon has been a hit this summer. You boys are such great helpers. They saw how little we had left to do in the mulch department and they said they were gonna finish it today so that we could have that area for a new bed. Yay, good helpers. Good boys. All right, this bed we left these three tomato plants because one or multiple ones have fruit on them over there in the flowers so we're leaving them and we just seed it underneath them with some lettuce and spinach and uh red dandelion are you done with chores yeah i finished the mulch the boys abandoned me but i got the front yard food orchard pretty well mulched out and a bunch of paths the mountain is gone. The mountain is gone. Wow. Another bed. Right here. Another bed. Oh, wow. It's been a long, beautiful weekend in the garden. This fall weather is gorgeous, and we got a lot done. More than I expected to. Yep. Thanks to the help of Ryan and the boys, everybody pitched in, worked hard. And that always motivates me and makes me work a lot harder, mm -hmm. too. I think the secret is just eating fresh watermelon the whole time you're out here. Yep, it re-energizes you. It's the best electrolyte there is. In October, I mean, awesome. Got these two and this bed all finished. I didn't add garlic in this one yet. I probably will. I just didn't have the energy or time. I'm going to set up this square greenhouse right here to put some more frost tender 
plants like lettuce.